Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. China urges the international community to support a new initiative by Beijing, which seeks to end the decades-old conflict between Israel and the Palestinians and realize the internationally aspired two-state solution. The Syrian Democratic Forces are reportedly making significant progress as they push further into Raqqa in their U.S.-backed fight against the Islamic State. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani responds to veiled threats by U.S. President Donald Trump, vowing to respond to any new sanctions Washington may implement against the Islamic Republic. China's ambassador to the United Nations, Liu Jiayi, urged the international community to support a new initiative by his country's president, Xi Jinping, aimed at ending the decades-old conflict between Israel and the Palestinians and realizing a viable two-state solution. The Chinese diplomat revealed that the initiative proposes four points to tackle the core issues of the conflict and would provide significant economic benefits to both Israel and the Palestinians. He further noted that China has also proposed launching a China-Palestine-Israel tripartite dialogue mechanism in order to cooperate the implementation of major assistance programs in the Palestinian territories. The Chinese proposal comes as part of a decision by the Chinese president some two weeks ago to set up Beijing's engagement in the Middle East after Xi Jinping held meetings with his Palestinian counterpart Mahmoud Abbas. That said, the current situation between Israel and the Palestinians reached an all-time low when the Palestinian leader decided last week to suspend the vital security coordination with Israel in response to the Israeli security measures surrounding the Temple Mount. <laughs> Israel removed the metal detectors it installed at the entrance to the Temple Mount after street violence by Muslim worshippers threatened to deteriorate into a wave of violence, similar to the bloody attacks that plagued the Jewish state in October of 2015 and persisted for months. Israel decided to install CCTV cameras as an alternative to the metal detectors, but the Palestinian leadership said the modified security measures were still unacceptable. Thus, the security coordination with Israel will not resume. In response to the Palestinian decision, Israel has reportedly started to pressure the Palestinian leadership by threatening to stop transferring to the Palestinian Authority tax funds it allocates on its behalf if the latter were to continue to suspend the security coordination, which senior security officials told TV7 is a key ingredient to the relative quiet that persisted in Israel and the West Bank for years. The Israeli threat, however, has infuriated the Palestinian leadership, with Palestinian Prime Minister Rami Hamdallah threatening Israel to appeal to international courts if it would decide to stop transferring tax funds. In an interview to Palestinian television, Hamdallah accused Israel of using the tax funds it collects on its behalf as leverage, which he claimed was illegal under international law. Hamdallah stressed that every time a crisis arises with Israel, this is the first action that it takes. Now to the ongoing war in Israel's northern neighbor, where the Syrian Democratic Forces are reportedly making significant progress as they push further into Raqqa in their fight against the Islamic State. The deputy commander of the International Coalition Forces against the Islamic State, Robert Jones, commended the efforts made by the U.S.-backed SDF alliance for their excellent progress, as he put it, and declared that the dual liberation of Syria's Raqqa and Iraq's Mosul would be fundamental to the defeat of the Islamic State. As you know, in Iraq, uh, in, in the last week or so, Iraqi security forces completed the defeat of Daesh uh, in Mosul. That was a crushing blow uh, for Daesh, uh, and that is being followed up here, as you know, in Syria, where the Syrian Democratic Forces are making excellent progress fighting their way into uh, Raqqa. We always knew that fight would be tough, uh, and of course it is, but they're making uh, great progress, and we should commend them for that. 
The liberation of Raqqa will be a really decisive blow uh, to Daesh. It will complete the liberation of their so-called and self-proclaimed uh, capital uh, uh, here in Syria. And when combined with the liberation of Mosul, uh, is, funda is fundamental to the defeat of Daesh. Under the banner of the SDF, an alliance of Kurdish and Arab militias that are fighting to take Raqqa from the Islamic State after the extreme Muslim group took control of the Syrian city at the beginning of 2014. With airstrikes and special forces from the US-led coalition, the SDF pushed into Raqqa in June of 2017 after advancing on the city for months. Among the significant achievements that were declared over the past month was a confirmed report by the British-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights that the leader of the Islamic State, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, has been killed early July in eastern Syria. The Islamic State did not confirm the reports of their leader's death, nor did they deny it, that after Russia's defense ministry announced at the end of June that it might have killed Baghdadi when one of its airstrikes targeted a gathering of Islamic State commanders on the outer skirts of the Syrian city of Raqqa, a statement Washington said it could not corroborate. It is important to know that several separate reports have claimed the death of Baghdadi, yet TV7 could not independently verify the death of the extreme Muslim group's leader. Now to another matter, U.S. President Donald Trump issued a veiled threat against Iran, warning the Islamic Republic to adhere to the terms of a nuclear agreement with world powers or else to face significant problems, depicting once again the international nuclear agreement with Iran as the worst deal he has ever seen. The Iran deal, which may be the single worst deal I've ever seen drawn by anybody, If that deal doesn't conform to what it's supposed to conform to, there's going to be big, big problems for them. That I can tell you. You're going to see that. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani responded to his American counterpart by vowing to respond to any new sanctions Washington may implement against Tehran. در برابر حرکت جدید کنگره حتما جمهوری اسلامی ایران عکس عمل نشون خواهد داد. ما حتما پاسخ خواهیم داد و در اولین قدم مجلس شورای اسلامی در این زمینه قدم های خودش رو برخواهد داشت. اون طرف اگه کنگاره است، این طرف هم مجلس شورای اسلامی ما هست و هر قدم دیگری هم ما لازم بدونیم و مورد نیاز بدونیم برای تقویت کشورمون و مسلحت کشورمون بدون توجه به تحریم های اونها، بدون توجه به سیاست های اونها به راه خودمون ادامه بدیم the U.S. House of Representatives voted last week to impose new sanctions on Iran, Russia and North Korea Although it was unclear how quick the bill would make its way to the White House for President Donald Trump to sign it into law. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. For more updates from Israel and the region, please join our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps.
first press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.